Hi friends, if you are looking for a simple, powerful, reliable and affordable laboratory power supply, this video is for you. I recommend making this circuit, only please assemble it on the printed circuit board which I created for you to avoid possible errors. By the way, this video is a continuation of the first part where I showed and explained how the circuit works, which was published in one of the foreign magazines many years ago. A link to the first part is in the description under this video. There is also a link to the project archive with a printed circuit board and circuit. Viewers ask to increase the power of the original circuit and to test it in more detail, so I added an additional power transistor and the board itself was naturally upgraded. The initial board size hasn't changed much. It is made at home in a traditional way using a laser printer. You can also order industrial boards of the highest quality from our sponsor GLCPCB. This manufacturer, with many years of experience on the market, will produce printed circuit boards of any complexity and size for you in the shortest possible time. Just download the board file, select the desired option, and that's all. Free shipping on the first order is available. A link to GLCPCB website can be found in the description under the video. It turned out an excellent power supply with a good load capacity and stabilization remained at a high level. The main disadvantage of linear circuits is their low efficiency, and when designing, there are problems with cooling for power transistors. Therefore, it is very desirable to use a transformer with several windings and a system for switching them. The simplest version is shown in the photo. About such systems we will talk another time. It is worth pointing out that now many prefer pulsed laboratory power supplies, in which the efficiency reaches 90% or more. But the line power sources are more valuable. Professional linear power supplies are always supplemented by a unit for winding switching. The power supply can provide a stable voltage from 0 to 35 volts at the output, and the output current can reach up to 5 to 6 amperes. By the way, the current is also stabilized, that is, the set value of the current will be independent to changes of the input and output voltage and is independent of the output load. If you expose current 1 amperes, then even with a short circuit it will be limited to 1 ampere. Here is the modernized circuit. I reduced the resistance of the current sensor to 0 0.1 ohm, added a second power transistor in parallel to the first. But in the emitter circuits of each transistor there is a current equalizing or ballast resistor. Power transistors can be any of suitable power. The collector current of the transistor is desirable 10 and higher amperes, with a power dissipation of 100 or more watts. Since this circuit is linear, it's preferable using transistors in the metal housings. If you haven't them, then use transistors in the TO247 package, so that not to get problems with heat emission. In the circuit are three powerful resistors. Ballast resistors could be of 5 watts, but the current sensor is desirable of 10 watts. I advise you to take ballast resistors with a resistance of 0 0.22 ohm, but mine have ended and I put 0 0.1 ohm. But if the transistors have the most identical parameters, then 0 0.1 ohm is even better. At first, as power transistors, I used 2SD209. In fact, it is an analog of the transistor MJE13009. Both options are very often used in computer power supplies. Each transistor can dissipate 100 to 130 watts of power, but only if there is good cooling. 
and if you are sure of the authenticity of the transistors. But their main problem is that the current gain is too low, only about 20. I don't recommend similar transistors for several reasons. First, the adjustment will be non-linear due to the small gain. For the same reason, controlling such transistors is difficult, so it will be heat up hard and it will need a small heat sink. I strongly advise the transistors in the metal case 2 and 3055. For such a circuit, they fit perfectly, a metal housing, decent power, and collector current, gain of current about 200. This is what you need. In the end, I put two SD1047. They have decent amplification. They are used both in power supplies and in the final cascades of low-frequency power amplifiers. The transistor is installed to the same heatsink, and it isn't necessary to isolate them with gaskets, as the collectors in our circuit are connected to each other. After power is applied to the stabilizer circuit, it is necessary to set the maximum output current by turning the trimmer resistor, for example 5 amperes. Next, set the maximum output voltage. It all depends on what kind of power source you have, what are the output current and voltage values. That is, this stabilizer can be adjusted without any problems for any power supply. Now we fit the input and check the minimum output voltage. As we can see, it is zero volts, which was to be proven. The adjustment is very smooth throughout the range. Now let's check the current. As you can see, the minimum output current can be dropped down to zero, and the maximum is 5 amperes without problems. One of the most important tests, how much will the output voltage draw down at certain currents? Let's look. But before that, it is very important to understand that there will be voltage drops on the wires, the measuring shunt of the ammeter, on the stabilizer itself, and also on the current equalizing resistors. That is, there will be drawdown in these areas. This is the case for any power supply. Current is 1 amperes, drawdown is about 0.1 volts. Current is 3 amperes, drawdown is 0.4 volts. And finally, a maximum current of 5 amperes, a drop of 0.65 volts. I repeat, without measuring equipment, these values would be much smaller. Let's check the stability of the output voltage for sudden changes in the input voltage, for example, drops in the mains. As you can see, the stabilizer is holding good. If changing the input voltage by 10 volts, the output changes only by 50 to 70 millivolts. Well, now pulsations. At a current of 1 amperes, pulsations are no more than 20 millivolts. With a current of 3 amperes, is about 25 to 30 millivolts. And at a maximum current of 5 amperes, although you see a mains noise, a ripple at the output is of about 50 to 60 millivolts. Agree, this is not bad for a power supply of this level. In the end, I remind you that in the description under this video, you will find a link to the archive with a printed circuit board. Also, in the description are links to a very good designs of similar boards of stabilizers and many more interesting ones. Well, my friends, I hope the video was useful. Please rate it, share with your friends, and if you have time, visit our official group ask questions, share experiences, upload pictures of your projects to albums and communicate with like-minded people. I remind that the link to the first part of the video can be found in the description. 
Now I have to say goodbye until new meetings with your words, Kaisan TV.